historically what happens between Memorial Day and the 4th of July, prices tend to go up. Then they typically will level off, say, the 4th of July for the rest of the summer. That's the peak summer driving season. So that's what tends to drive the price up. This year, though, we saw the prices go up as high as they did for almost no reason. It looks like it's much more than supply and demand, but more commodity brokers and investors looking at places to put money where the stock market doesn't look so good. They're putting it into gas and oil, which is tending to drive the price up. It looks like gasoline delivery for July. It looks like we're really going to close in right on that $4 a gallon mark. So it looks like prices um, for the summer are going to continue to be as high as they are higher than they are now. It's going to get to the point where there has to be a pushback from the investor market at this point. This is worldwide, not just in the United States. And keep in mind the same price that we pay for crude oil here is the same price they pay for crude oil in all the other parts of the world, which translate into their prices. Um, but one of the most important things you can do is look at your own driving habits. Um, easy on the gas, easy on the brake. Um, really try to stretch it down the gas as much as you can. And also look for speed. Um, your car is typically most economical at 55 to 60 miles an hour. When you start going above those speeds, your gas economy goes down pretty dramatically. So look at your own speed. Don't try to waste gas with hard acceleration. Easy on the gas is the best advice. And if you have to step on the brake hard, that means you've built up way too much energy. You want to use the brakes as easily as you use the gas pedal. So nice and easy that way. Uh, tire pressure makes an important uh, factor in your in how economical your vehicle is. If your tires are low, the vehicle is harder to roll. If it's harder to roll, it uses more energy. Carry extra weight in the car. Um, the lighter you can make the car, the more efficient it is. And then looking at all the different fluids in the vehicle, too. There's a lot of little things you can do. You're never going to get a car that gets 20 miles per gallon, get 50 miles per gallon. But you might get a car that should get 20 miles per gallon. It's only getting 15, back up to 20 or 21 by just maintaining it. A car that is poorly maintained is going to waste fuel. If you're driving around with the check engine light on, that's an indication your car's not running as efficiently as it should. Making sure the air filter is good and clean. Making sure the car has had spark plugs put in it recently. The better the car runs, the more fuel efficient it's going to be. So maintain your vehicle, follow your own fleet. You know that Randy is a great guy. No one ever looks at it, but it's a great guy to look at if you um, really try to follow the maintenance. You follow the maintenance, the fuel company follows that. Our AAA website, if you go to the AAA website, there's a section called Fuel Finder. And what you do is you go to that section, put in your zip code, and it'll bring up gas stations within your area. And it's based off of credit card information. It will say what the, what that price was. And typically, the price is within two days old. So it should be pretty current information. Another handy thing about our AAA website, too, if you're planning a trip, say you're going from Plymouth to Washington, D.C., and you want to know how much you're going to spend for fuel, you can put all that information in. Um, the different fields on this, on this uh, trip planner, they'll tell you, tell you exactly how much you're going to spend for gasoline to go on your trip. Some gas stations will still have what amounts on 